call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore. We resolve the agenda for the November 7th regular meeting council to receive. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have a motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore. We resolve the minutes of the October 17th regular meeting council to be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, item four on your agenda, we go to hearings and delegations. Our first delegation is Jack Dick, Donna Martin, Kim Curliak, and Warren from the uh, Swan Valley Employment, Employment and Training Project. Work Group Program. Are you all coming to the table? Or <laughs> the uh, coordinators up. Okay. That's all right. Welcome to our council meeting. My name is Kim Kurliak and I'm the current team leader for the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project, um, SVETP. I am here this evening to provide an overview of our project um, and what services we provide to the members of the Swan River community and surrounding areas. Our mission statement of the, is to provide support services that enhance employability and foster the independence of underemployed and unemployed, unemployed individuals in the Swan River and surrounding area. Um, our mandate is to provide employment assistance services to clientele who are at least 18 years of age and unemployed or underemployed. In order for the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project to meet both the mission statement and mandate of the program, a team of three staff members work collaboratively to ensure individuals' needs are met daily. Currently, we have Corey Kamash as our administrator, Melody Bell as the job search coach and job readiness facilitator, and myself as the team leader. SVETP receives our funding through the Manitoba Government um, Training and Employment Services Department and um, we run with a budget of about $154,831. Um, we're expected to provide services to about 200 new clients during our contract year um, and as of October 31st, I'm pleased to inform that we have provided services to a total of 111 individuals which is about 51% of our contract obligations already met um, in five months. Um, our goal for the remainder of this contract year is to continue to provide support um, to our active clients as well as to welcome any new clients um, who may need to resume done or um, cover letter completed. Um, we take lots of referrals through different um, other projects and groups and the area of Swan River. We also walk, welcome walk-ins who've heard about our services through word of mouth or posters. We provide a wide range of services um, like resume, cover letter development, job search assistance, training and application forms, um, interview preparation, educational information, and we have a job board that is um, at our office so anyone can come in on a regular basis and see what local jobs are posted in this area um, and then also get any advice on how to proceed from there if they want. We also provide a telephone, computer and faxing services for anyone, uh, any of our clients. Um, we usually have between 5 to 20 individuals who come through our door on any given day um, and other times way more than that. So. We're, we're usually pretty busy. We offer a job readiness training program, we call it JRP. We do it about four times a year, and we get groups of usually between five to 10 people and who have a lot of barriers to employment, and we work one-on-one -on -one with them and in groups to address those specific needs of each individual. Um, we also work in collaboration with the Swan River work, rec Parks and Recreation Work Crew, um, they're also funded through the Training and Employment Services um, with Manitoba Government. We, can, we oversee their budget, which is currently $127,849, um, and that covers things like the, the wages for the work crew members and supervisors, work boots, equipment, and um, any training that the work crew members will do in their time with the, with the work crew. Um, in the last five years, we've also implemented doing the JRP classes with them on a bi-weekly basis to help them overcome some of the barriers that they're also facing. Um, we work really close together with the work crew and the project manager um, to complete the proposal and monitor the budget. Um, 
Just in closing, I'd like to thank the Town of Swan River for their continued support and sponsorship of the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project and for allowing me to attend and present at the Council meeting tonight. Um, Swan Valley Employment and Training looks forward to continuing our work relationship with the Town of Swan River. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kim. <clears throat> I am Warren Wool. Uh, oh, did you have questions? No, no go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. They'll have, they can ask questions after. Okay, I'm Warren Wool. I'm one of the work crew supervisors for Parks and Rec, and uh, I usually I run the crew all year round um, for the program. And uh, the purpose of uh, Swan River Parks and Recreation Work Crew is to provide an on-the-job training experience and utilize the community's resources in order to prepare for participants for success in employment and self-sufficiency. I'm here because we need a truck all year round and uh, usually um, kind of rent the truck for eight months at a time. Um, but uh, to have a truck all year round be great, greatly uh, uh, beneficial to the crew. Some of the things that we do on the crew is for the work crew uh, duties are transport each crew member to work sites throughout Swan River. Uh, crew members consist of two to five, uh, excluding the supervisor, that's me. Uh, all the equipment such as trimmers, tillers, chains, chainsaws, uh, fuel, tools, all kinds of tools. Um, hauling debris from community clean for a fork, uh, from community cleanup to, uh, dump to, to the dump site on a regular basis. Uh, job search, uh, crew members applications and resume uh, applying, that's where we take them out into community and apply here and there if they need to. Um, transport members to the main office as needed. Uh, transport members to training like uh, for women's uh, first aid training, serving and safe. Um, from networking in our community, statistically, we have many crew members that do succeed and secure employment in our local uh, employment locally. Uh, currently, we have uh, members with JB Construction, LB, uh, LP, Home Hardware, and professional uh, and a professional three class three truck driving training in Dauphin. Also, we currently have three crew <coughs> members working in our in our area in the arena. Um, yeah, that's the reason why we need a truck all year round. Uh, I usually have a lot of big guys on my crew and uh, we have this little truck all the time. And just, it's so hard to get people around in our community we, and the job has expanded so much in the last three years. Our duties for the community and for the program. This, it just gets these guys out in the community and building their resumes by networking and uh, it will sure help a lot. Thanks. Any questions? Thank you very much. Councilor Delorio and Councilor Jacobs. Um, I just want to make a comment. We've spoke uh, amongst council many times over the last few years about how grateful we are for the work crew program. We know the good service that you guys provide to, yeah. to the town. So um, just wanted to let you guys know that your efforts are greatly appreciated. And I uh, can't speak on behalf of the truck right now, but uh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, we'll, we'll look and see what we can do. Thank you. Councilor Jacobson. Yeah, I can kind of echo that too. As chairperson for Parks and Recreation, I, I thank you for the, the partnership that we have with your group and, and with the outstanding work that your work, work crew does do in our parks and all recreational areas. I've heard from several different people in our community that have uh, mentioned how well the job that they do. So thank you very much. Yes. Councilor White. Do you charge for those services? <laughs> No. At the Swan Valley Employment and Training? Yeah. No, it's all free. It's, it's all, all free. covered under government funding. And who would refer those people to your office? Well, if you, you could either, there's a few ways. You can walk in if you're unemployed or underemployed, so you're working less than 20 hours a week. Um, you can come in our door anytime and we'll open a file and start right then and there with you. Or you can get uh, referred from the Friendship Center, Swan Valley, or through Training and Employment Services, Donna Martin and Jack Dick. They do a lot of referrals and um, any other agencies in town, really EIA or EIA. Yeah. But it's all free of charge, which I, we have lots of people who are quite surprised. They'll say at the end of our meeting, so what do I owe you? <laughs> and you go, no, no, it's, it's free, and they just can't believe. Yeah, it's a service there. 
just to reiterate what council was saying, how fortunate we have, and I think I've been around since the program started, uh, fortunate to have this in our community, uh, not only to provide uh, sort of uh, underemployed people with job skills, but yeah. for also the work that uh, you and your crew do in the park. Uh, again, on behalf of council and all the citizens of our town, I thank you for the work that you do. I usually hand in a, a, a what's this here, the uh, the report monthly to Julie. To council, you. council has a report here. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah. 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 Thank you. White. Now that we're there, I have a, a concern, as I assume much of the community does, relative to needles. Yeah. I'm concerned one for you guys. I hope you're taking some protection when we you do. Have it. We actually put on, um, I, I, I've, I've taken some training through mental health about how to, the, how to handle the, uh, the, uh, the needle situation I guess we have in the yeah. parks every year and uh, statistically they, they the, the pharmacies they hand out at least 3,500 needles per year around in our community this year we've uh, the containers that we have we've six of them I've taken to uh, to get disposed of we have we have the um, what are those called there the, uh, the disposal sites a few of them around town that we take care of and uh, Six enough? Yes, we have six containers. Six that containers enough? full of needles. That, that, that we need more. So that concern. We need more to tell you. Truth. That's that's where I was going because yeah. you obviously have six sites where you find needles a lot. Yeah, there's, Are there there's, more there's sites? only three sites that we have the the uh, the, the needle disposals, yeah. and uh, I'm actually asking for for more this year. I want to put in a request for more because there's a lot of hot spots around town that we we get calls. I get the calls. If there's needles there that are just laying there, you know, we have we have to go dispose of them. How many needles would you pick up in your best guess? Best guess, I don't know how many a container holds, but they're full. Oh, the okay. containers, are, the containers are, are so big, like they they're they're big containers, and I've disposed six of them this year. Cool. Yeah, Derek, don't you? We have a source where you get them made uh, locally in the containers. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at things, yeah, it, it's becoming yeah. a, a bigger, bigger problem every year. I think playgrounds where children could be playing during a school day. I hate to say it, but that's exactly where we find them. We find them around the benches, around the darkest spots in the parks, the washrooms especially are hot spots. The library. Um, sometimes at the soccer fields, not as much, but it's closer around the areas in the middle of town. That scares the heck. It is. It's very scary, especially when the, in the kids' playgrounds. And uh, the odd time in the skate park here, we do a lot of cleanup in there. We, we're we out first thing in the morning. The crew's out, and I teach them about all the, uh, how to handle that stuff. So. Okay. Thank you again, and also thanks to Jack and Donna for the support you give to the program. If I may, just uh, Mr. Mayor, I just also want to thank you on behalf of the Department of Education and Training. Uh, the town has been a, an incredible partner uh, in these two projects, and uh, you guys have been so supportive. We appreciate it. Julie does a lot of work, and her staff, Patty, as well. And uh, we really, really appreciate that, and uh, come in for as well. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. You know what, I, I, I hope this isn't a point of order, but I just wanted to share a quick, cute little story. Um, your ears are probably burning one day a, a month or two ago, um, and this is how I came to learn about the uh, the component of the service you provide where you take people out to uh, apply for jobs, but uh, oh, okay. I work out at LP, LP yes, yeah, yes, and yes. Uh, a town yeah. truck pulled up one day, yeah. and uh, the people in the front office came and told me, there was just some people here applying for jobs in a town vehicle. <laughs> I know during work hours, and their supervisor was waiting in the truck, and I and I lost it. <laughs> so so I phoned Julie right away, yeah. and and this is how I came to learn. And you know what? As soon as she told me wh how that worked, I you yeah, know what? On my part, I should have. No, no. I, 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 excellent. I, that's an excellent yeah. service you guys you yeah. guys provide. It gets people a, a leg up, and yeah. kudos to you guys. It, and it, shame on me for being ignorant of that and immediately jump into the the wrong conclusion. So. See, that's the part of the networking is I do around town. I just, that's kind of all new going out that far with them. But uh, there are jobs available there, so I, I'm trying to help Yeah, no, you get good. Council just Lurie just has a tendency one at a time to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, French Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, continue on in our agenda. We have.
uh, a delegation uh, with regard to restorative justice week, and the delegation is Amanda Chartrand, supposed to be Sergeant Henson, but we have a fill-in for Sergeant Henson, so welcome to our council meeting. Thank you. Much better looking. It's Constable Cameron. Unfortunately, Sergeant Henson could not, <laughs> could not be here tonight, so he sent a representative from the RCMP. So, hello, my name is Amanda Chartrand. I'm the restorative justice facilitator for the Parkland. Um, I work for the John Howard Society of Brandon, so that is our main office is in Brandon. Um, we've only been in the Parkland for about a year and a half. Um, Manitoba was the first province to get the Restorative Justice Act, and it was shortly after that that uh, this position was formed, both in the Parkland and in Westman. Um, so I'm usually in Swan River a couple times a month. Um, I try and if I have clients in court, I'm at the courthouse. That's usually where I meet with clients as well. They've been very accommodating there um, to give me office space and stuff like that. Um, for those of you who don't know what restorative justice is, it's an alternative to the court. So trying to deal with matters outside of the court to not try and kind of free up some court time because courts are usually busy and it's usually a lengthy process. Um, and that's where the RCMP um, come in. We do get pre-charges um, that come directly to us, so we bypass the court totally, if possible. Um, also get referrals <coughs> from Crown Attorney's Office, and we deal with those. We do um, mediations. We also do adult alternative measures and extra judicial sanctions for youth. Um, with the restorative justice process, it gives victims a chance to be as involved in the process as they would like. Um, some are involved in the whole process. We do mediations with them and then they get to have some say in what the accused needs to do to help um, make amends for their actions. Other victims don't want to be involved directly but want me to keep them updated or want to have a little bit of a say in what they would like to see happen. And some victims, they, they just, they're done with it. They don't want to have anything to do with the process, which is fine. That's, that's a choice that we give them. Um, so in November is Restorative Justice Week. So it is coming up the 19th to the 26th. Um, and I know last year, my predecessor, Pauletta, and as well as my supervisor, Travis, were here and um, the mayor was kind enough to sign a proclamation for Restorative Justice Week. So that is kind of my spiel. If anyone has any questions, hopefully I can answer them to the best of my ability. <coughs> any questions from Council? Council Morio. Um, just rough guess, like number, like how many people do you actually put through the restorative justice process in like the, the Valley area? <laughs> well, I've only been with the John Howard for about four months. So I would say in those four months, the summer was extremely slow for referrals. I would say I've had about 10 in the last four months. I currently have three right now that I'm working with in summer. Do you work with the education and training program with uh, uh, through the Parks and Rec at all? I haven't at all. Um, each individual is different on what sort of things I get them to do. It, that could be something that they need to be involved with in the future, depending on the individual. Council White. So the court would refer the individual to you for discussions? If they feel, if the defense attorney and the Crown's office feel that diversion is something that is possible, they will refer it to me. And then I do my best to try and follow through with the diversion program. In this area, the hardest thing is contacting clients. Sometimes addresses change, phone numbers have changed. Um, when they don't phone you back, they don't show up for appointments. It is a voluntary program, so I, I don't run after people. If they don't show up to appointments and don't want to be actively involved in the program, I send it back to the referring agent and they move forward. How is the RCMP involved in the program? So RCMP can send um, pre-charge referrals, so they can respond to an incident and decide, for instance, my last one I got, um, a theft. 
and they can refer it straight to me instead of sending it to the Crown's office. Um, and then I can deal with it, and if it's successful, I write up uh, just a little report saying what they have to do and that it was successful, send it back to them, and then they can close their file. On the other hand, I have had an individual that was referred by RCMP who I could not track down. And unfortunately, I have to send them a report saying that it was unsuccessful because I could not track them down. And then they would have to go through their process and then send it to the Crown and, and move forward that way. Thank you very much. I have, we have a resolution here to proclaim uh, restorative justice week. So I'll read the resolution and the council will hold on it. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Glory. Whereas in the face of crime or conflict, restorative justice offers a philosophy and the approach that uses these matters principally as harm done by people and, relation and relationships. And whereas restorative justice is a non-adversarial, non-retributive approach to justice and emphasizes healing of victims, accountability of offenders, and the involvement of citizens in creating healthier, safer communities. And whereas this year's theme for Restorative Justice Week is inspiring innovation, it is an opportunity to learn about restorative justice as well as educate and celebrate along with other communities across the country during this week. Therefore, be it resolved that the week of November 19th to 26th, 2017, be proclaimed Restorative Justice Week in the town of Swan River. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Julie. Um, can you get a photo taken with Amanda? Absolutely, that would be great. You can see my mustache. I showed you what I'm Agenda. We have a letter that Council has on their screen from Brent Parahoniak uh, and Carl Robley to explain it to Council. Welcome to our Council meeting, Carl. Uh, like I said, Council has a copy of the letter. So, Thank you. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Brent Parahoniak tonight as he's unable to be here. So he asked me to uh, present his letter of request. And so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, dear Council Members and Julie Fothergill, uh, regarding 509 and 511 Kelsey Trail, uh, I am writing with submission of a request pertaining to the subject mentioned property, namely and currently owner of, in the estate of the recently deceased Irv Perhoniak. I have been designated power of attorney by way of testament and will as per my father's wishes. Currently there is no road access rights in writing within any documentation to establish the easement from Highway 10 to this residential and other property as identified on the Town of Swan River property tax bill. I have been informed all that was and is in place with the current owner of the adjacent condominium development property was is that an informal verbal agreement with my father for the residence and current business owner of said property. 
With intentions of selling this property or renting a home in near future, it is of utmost importance to have a means of access road to this property in light of unpredicted revoke of access from the owner of the adjacent property, possibly by reason of own circumstances to this long established residence. <coughs> in light of the above, I am approaching Council for the approval in having a right of way road constructed, providing unrestricted access to the property at no cost to the current or future residence, business owner, but solely to that of the town of Swan River. Thanking you in advance for anticipated consideration and approval to this request. Should you require additional information or clarification, please do not hesitate to contact me. I would appreciate confirmation to the receipt of this written request with direction to the formality of representation process in an upcoming 2017 town council meeting. Respectfully, Brent Parhoniak. Thank you. Council, have any questions? Council Deloria. I, so I see there was an estimate passed around for, for, for a road there. So how, how would this property have ever came to be without a, without a road? Like, we, how would this have been developed? It really seems to know, I think, if I recall, we, came first the house? Well the actually the Skyline Motel okay. and the original house and taxidermy shop there were owned by brothers okay. and then over the years the the, uh, the properties changed hands. So they were subdivided cutting access off to a business and a residence where technically the, the the one property owner has full access control over the two other properties. So it's if he just decides to say you're not coming on that property, they're landlocked. Council uh, Jacobson and Council Florida. So is the property that we're talking about is that owned by the property owners there now, or is it uh, owned by MIT, or who owns the actual property where the proposed road will be? The proposed road is on it will be on a public reserve. So there's. It, it won't be built, like that estimate is not for a street construction, it's basically for a lane. So we'd basically just be digging out uh, a section six, seven meters wide, and uh, we would just use drainage right into it. It'd be up against the MIT ditch, but it would be put on our, uh, our public reserve, which we would have to change into a road allowance, and basically a lane would be built. But so it would be a MIT, public lane. So would MIT, sorry, but would MIT be, approve this? Uh, we're not we're not getting access onto the highway. We're accessing I can't remember the name of the street going to the wells. That's where the that's that's what we access. So it'd be, it'd be, it would run parallel to the Skyline Motel access? Right, against the the highway it, property. Again, so again the, again so it'd be right against the, the ditch then? That's right. Chelsea Trail will just extend straight. We would have a little jog in it like Curry Road. But I would assume MIT would have to approve that. Like if we have to go through a go to Song and Nash just to get a sign put somewhere along the highway. As, as far as I know, permits are for signs and buildings. Uh, to be honest, I did not ask the board if we have to get a permit for a road. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Councilor Jacobson and Councilor White and Councilor Gloria. Who will be the eventual owner of this road? The town, it will be under a road allowance. Councillor White. There are two names. Why would they just make a perpendicular to the road? That's about a, a quarter of the distance. Well, then, then you would have to access, access the, highway. the highway. They wouldn't allow an intersection well, that close. Uh, on the other side of the bridge, roughly, the same, I'm guessing the same length is a road into the Minish area where Tom Norman lives. Well, there is an access on this side already, and that's what they're currently using, but you have to go through the property to gain access. If they just went straight on the highway, I'm pretty sure they would be denied due to the bridge. It's a quarter, I'm guessing, I'm trying to visualize, but probably more than a quarter of the distance, which is uh, three quarters of the cost. Depending on probably what you're doing. not, because you would have to be, it would have, you know, the highways would have to. You would have, have an approach like that. Completely be involved. I'm yeah. building a lane where they would want to build you know, a road. I'd like to see both options on, on a schematic of some sort. Council of the way. And sent them to MIT and say which one would you approve, if not what? First. Council of the way. I don't know. Um, 
is there any alternative that would be uh, that would appease the owner? I guess um, some sort of an easement or a caveat on the skyline property that that would you know get get something written into the uh, title of the land that you like. We get easements onto private land, you know, for for our purposes. Is there any way that that would be that the owner would would agree to that rather than building a road? Uh, talk to the owner. And he's not particularly in love with that idea. Um, there is no easement at all now. Mm -hmm. um, and I can foresee problems. I'm the owner operator of Swan Valley Taxidermy when I rent a building on that property. Uh, I've rented it for the last over 13 years and uh, hopefully will be able to continue to operate my business out of the same place for the next several years. Um, because it used to be the motel and it wasn't a big deal because it was transient traffic there all the time. You know, just people staying overnight in the motel or whatever and there was no permanent resident there to be bothered by it. I foresee now because it's condominiums and there's four or five different dwellings right along that same strip of, of, of road that you need to access the property and especially uh, Considering the, the nature of my business, I'm thinking there could very easily potentially be a problem down the road. You know, you're somebody sitting in the living room and off goes a bear carcass going by. And, and this happens several times a year. And in fact, in, in, uh, in season, uh, there's a lot of traffic that comes into my, my, uh, my business through that property. Like I say, I don't think it was even a consideration before, but now that it's going to be residences there, it could very easily become a problem. Any other questions or comments? So what will have to happen, Carl, is that Carl, Council will have to talk about this, and I think Council wants some information from the Department of Highways, and uh, we'll eventually, you know, I'd like to give you a time frame, but I don't know that I can right now, until mm -hmm. we get the information that we want. Yeah. Okay. No, that's what uh, Mr. Crowley had okay. to request me to make, so. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, continuing on, uh, item 4.4 on your agenda, we have a delegation regarding fall leaves and pervading menace, maintenance in the Legion Park. Mary and Marge, welcome to our council meeting. Council has the letter, and council has read the letter. And we will be very brief. We had no idea that there would be so many delegations. It's wonderful to see the vibrancy of, of uh, participatory democracy. Uh, it, it seems a little ludicrous to be talking about leaves given old man winter. And I'm living on Ninth Avenue. We, we've had the snowplow go up and down a number of times. And just to say thank you, whoever's on that snowplow really knows how to manipulate the blade because. Our driveways are not barricaded by the big, uh, you know, bar you know, the snow bar barricade. So it's just, oh, thank God, you know, that kind of makes up for the leaves in a sense. Anyway, about the leaves, we're going to be brief and try not to repeat anything that's in the letter that you've already read. Uh, in preparation, uh, Marge and I, we went to high school together, uh, and we're depression babies, so uh, we're, we're, we come from scarcity, so we know that. Uh, uh, Decisions reflect the scarcity of money and resources and so on, but nevertheless, we're still here to advocate on behalf of preventive maintenance in the park, namely, namely the leaves. Uh, and Marge and I got talking about, okay, I said to Marge, you know, I, from my point of view, a little less cutting of the grass would be okay and more attention to the leaves. And and Marge got talking about the importance of the grass. And anyway, you're going to go back in history a little bit and talk about a fire that happened some years ago. And this, this has to do with grass. This was in, in 1970. And there was a fire started at the north end of the, the park. And it quickly traveled. Then the grass was long and dry. And all the residents brought their hoses out and we hosed it all down and we saved houses. And then, but we do have a, a problem with garbage. 
leaves blowing into our yards. Now, no needles, no, not that we found, but as the way the wind blows, it comes up the river and we're sitting right, right in line of the bowl. And we get all the leaves, all the, the dirt and garbage and, and we've been cleaning it up for years and everything has been fine until yeah. this we're year. Not, we're not <laughs> complaining about, no, about that. No. And, but fire is our main concern. We saw it once, we don't want to see it again. That's, and we need to pick up those dry leaves and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we talked to Mr. Poole and he said there was no resources then, no help available. So we took it upon ourselves. And I have pictures and the, and the leaves were packed hard six feet deep, seven in places. Couldn't get in the garage or out of the garage for leaves. And we had, <laughs> I don't know how many bags we packed and we thought, well, we can't keep doing this, taking them out to the garbage dump. So being in the park, we thought, well, we'll, we'll what? Three, was it three eighty-year-olds plus, so, and uh, one younger one, and we raked all the leaves out of this packed garden. Mary's place, my place, and, and the two neighbors further down. We packed them and we carried them all back down to the park. We piled them all in a big pile, and. Mother Nature was smiling on us because the good Lord sent rain down because we were getting our hoses out so they wouldn't blow again. And the Mother Nature shined upon us and it rained and then it turned to snow and the snow is still there and the leaves are still piled high, hoping the park will take them away next spring. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a preventive maintenance program, yeah. it's, it's, it's not easy to, uh, to to predict just when the leaves are going to fall off the trees. I know that the third week, and, um, and we'll wind it up soon because you've got to get that to the other part of me, uh, the third week of October was when that wind hit, and we knew it was going to hit, so we, uh, both Jack Goldhart and I were out in our respective yards getting our leaves cleaned up and so on. And when the wind hit, at about 70 minutes after two was when it hit my house, and it had us up, and you looked out the window and saw leaves flying at the height of my eavesdrops. So it was just like a blizzard. So, and uh, that, that's again reinforcing or, or emphasizing how strong the wind is funneling up the river there towards us. Uh, in coming here, we haven't tried to uh, mobilize the rest of Ninth Avenue uh, <laughs> north of there. It's just Marge and I. Because I think it's, Lance, it's you know. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Lance is, has has other protection there. Yeah. The ball diamonds, the fences around there provide barriers, and, and you know, I'm sure you're familiar with the landscape. But the the wind does funnel, and so we get targeted. And when I looked out the following morning and saw the depth of the leaves, because there had been a strong wind and accumulation of a lot of leaves about 10 years ago. I think from my little front yard, I took 12 orange bags from the front, and then there were other orange bags from the back. And this year exceeded the, you know, this was the mother of all, all leaf storms. Uh, so, you know, it, it was a conundrum. And I was kind of, you know, thinking, let it, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And, and then when the, the thought of fire, you know, because it, it, it would have just crept up to where I had planted trees to break the wind and the, the, the trees had caught leaves and it would just have been a, 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 raging, a, a raging fire with those, the trees that I have. It, it, it would have, it, there would have been a terrible fire if there had ever been a smoker tossing a cigarette. Or, and the park is used by a lot of people and uh, so it's, just, it's just a real out. credit to the town, the park, and yeah. it really it's, is it's something we're proud of. Yeah. 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 We're, we're very proud of the park, but we're just advocating for preventive maintenance. And thank, thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Councilors, have any questions?
Councillor Jacobs. Well, thank you both for coming here. My neighbors down the street, and yeah, that windstorm was was fairly yeah. large, and yeah. we were the recipient of a, of a little bit of the leaves as well. I couldn't believe in the ten years that I had lived there that uh, the drifts, like you said, were amazing. But uh, speaking of, of our parks, you know, they they do, like you said, uh, do a lot of work <coughs> trying to mulch as much as they can, and and, uh, and I guess we just have to try to communicate that with them and. And perhaps maybe next year we have some different ideas. But you you heard from the crew today uh, or tonight earlier that we have that uh, works really hard in the park. So I think that if we have different ideas, if you have leads or whatever that maybe are accumulating there, and if you don't have the resources to haul them away, perhaps maybe we can even talk to them about you know maybe picking you know your bags if you have them there. I can't speak right now for that, but that is a possibility. So, but uh, we'll we'll do we'll continue to do all that we can to keeping the park uh, cleaned up and hopefully Mother Nature doesn't do what it did uh, the other night in the next little while again. So. Yeah. Well, it is a nice park and, and, and so is. many people do enjoy it. Yes. Us included. <laughs> well, thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. I just got a question. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Moore. Um, like, I know like, we can't control Mother Nature and the wind and all that stuff and this year we well, could all agree that it was an anomaly and stuff like this. The wind probably blew a lot of the leaves off the trees and they hadn't fallen yet. To oh, yes. um, mm -hmm. But I said, I'd be curious to see like your pictures and that, but one, one thing that I would be in favor of like even myself going on as a preventative maintenance going forward, because um, like you had mentioned that you guys are at one end of the street or at the park where you got the blow, is that maybe looking down the road where we can look at uh, maybe planting some evergreens or something like that to help stop the blow from actually like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, it's just the, the force of the wind, like you say, coming down the river and stuff like that. If we can put like natural barriers, like with natural trees or something like that, that don't have leaves, um, uh, that are there for not just a one-time use, but for generations to yeah. come, that we can. Uh, yeah, there used to be. Then they were old, and some of them were cut down. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like if we put for, yeah, plant for some safety, younger yeah. uh, spruce yeah. trees or something like that, that would help stop yeah. some of the blow, like especially when we get the higher winds. Pushing yeah. it out of the park and into your your properties that we put some barriers. Yeah, so and like, if the leaves get dry and somebody there's lots of smoking down there, so you know somebody yeah. drops a match. And because well, I know I live on the south end of town and I don't have a tree on my yard, but I had lots of leaves from the rest of the town <laughs> in my yeah. yard. So um, my house. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do have pictures yeah, on my iPad if anybody wants to see them tonight. But I know you're all busy here. Well, someday you might build it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Mary, you know where we can get some trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll continue on under correspondence. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a number of letters of correspondence. Uh, I'm not sure that many of them require a reply. Uh, reply. Most of them are just in, for information. So the first one Please. is uh, from AMM regarding the provincial fire protection plan. Night. Mostly for information. Then we have a letter from uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, informing us about Black Friday. And a letter from Prairie Mountain Health regarding recruitment incentives. Probably something that I should respond to. And uh, a letter regarding telehealth open house if anybody wishes to attend. And an invitation from the luxury townhouses on the 14th of November. Are you there, Your Worship? Uh, I can attend on the Wednesday, Friday. I'll be out of town, so I can't. So if somebody can go for Friday from our office, that'd be great. <coughs> I'm tied up all week next week. So. And the letter from Manitoba Munis Municipal Relations regarding asset management plans. Uh, that would be for administration. Councillor Delari. Well, that came up uh, from our delegation last meeting. What can you guys tell us about this new legislation? This is kind of the first we're hearing of it. Did you guys probably know? Yeah, Terry's brought it up uh, several times over the past few months, and it's basically, we got just correspondence from the province kind of summarizing that we won't be able to apply for any federal grants without an asset management plan in place by March 2018. Mm -hmm. Since, I think, this <coughs> week or last week, we've, we got an email from the province saying that we do not have to be complete our plan by March 18, just proof that we have started one. So 
we are in the process of doing that. Right now, the province doesn't have, like, well, we know that Ontario and some municipalities in Manitoba are sending their, their employees to Ontario for this training to become an asset manager. Uh, we don't know if that those credentials will be accepted in Manitoba, so it could be a, a waste, but Manitoba right now is not providing any training. So they, they want a management plan as far as infrastructure assets or as far as Every. vehicles, everything the town owns? Absolutely. It's just what town owns, not what the community owns. The town. The town owns. So that'd be all the sidewalks, all the Every. everything. The row is separate from the curb, sidewalk, the base, asphalt. So basically it's a huge project to do once and then just maintain after. Well, they want to, they yep. say they're going to keep track and it basically, they keep talking about it basically like a solid 10 year plan. So, so does PSAP not already do this for us? Not that far in the future. But it, it already gives us an in, in, inventory of everything we have, right? Right. What we have to do is have a 10-year plan moving forward. Where is it going to be? How are we going to accept the criteria for how we're going to change and prioritize our massive capital projects? Basically, they're saying when we hand out Building Canada grants, we don't want you to rush and get ready and just go spend it. We want this to be a part of a long-term plan so that you've put some thought into this and you're using our money wisely. Awesome, James. Well, I guess uh, part of my question was answered by this PSAP uh, thing, but are you are you guys able to, to do this uh, or do we, do we have to hire someone to do this? Or, or We're, we, we've, Terry's been really after the province on how, how we become asset <laughs> managers and what exactly they want because they, they haven't really they haven't really given us any clear guidelines on, on how to set this thing up. So it's their learning and we are right behind them. So maybe the timeline is maybe a little bit too... Oh yeah. That's, well, that's the correspondence that we push just that got. back a little bit? Yeah. yeah, that's the correspondence that we just got saying that by March 18, we just have to get one started as opposed yeah. to having one finished. We don't know when the deadline is. But as for the feds, it better not be three years from now because the feds are probably have their deadline, but we don't know when that is. And then, of course, there's a lot of companies out there that are approaching us now to, oh, sure. you know, for yeah. us to purchase their services to put together a plan. I think we have a CFO. And, uh, yeah, Ter Terry's been at been attending webinars uh, with some of these companies yeah. as well just to get an idea of what's all involved and and if he thinks he can handle it on his own. Any other questions? Well, that Terry's has the expertise, and if he can't handle it, he can probably direct someone that could be hired internally, temporarily, to, to finish it versus spending an inflated cost on a mm -hmm. consultant over there. Okay, we'll continue on under new business. The back truck boiler replacement, you have a decision paper. Any questions to Derek? So, what is not, you say that the entire boiler is not in good work operating condition? What? Yeah, so there's, it's always something that goes on at the, at the hose pops, there's valves, everything's, there's rusted parts, the pump is breaking down, the, everything is going to be replaced on a piecemeal, and they're recommending to me over and over to get a brand new one. So, so did our mechanics, when we would have inspected this prior to purchasing, why like, was this not, we only had it for not even a year? Of course, like we look, like you look at it now and it, it seems fine when it runs, it's just things keep breaking down. And it ran when we were looking at it down in Winnipeg, it ran when it was up here for the test, and it ran for several, you know, months after, until pop, this went, poof, this went, the coil went. So, uh, I am requesting that we get a new one so that we can have a reliable boiler for the life cycle of the machine uh, and, and that we pay for it out of the, the machinery reserve. If we don't, it can go at any time and when it does, uh, I guess we just replace replace a piecemeal if we want that, if we want that boiler operating. How, how long is delivery on this? Uh, it will, it's, 
it'll be they have one in stock. So it's where going to pay? Yeah. And then downtime for the truck. Uh, they'll. Troy probably told me a day. And and what do we have? Thirty days to pay. Yeah. In that thirty days. Yeah. So is there any way we can push this to? Well, to you know, if we order it in the beginning of December, we don't have to pay till the beginning of January. It's coming that, on the machine reserve. Though. I know, but it's. I don't like spending outside the budget, regardless of where it's coming from. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's only. Is there a repair budget? Yeah, uh, to to put to put six grand on a repair budget. It's gonna wait a month and a half until. But doesn't it, it only has to wait three weeks? It's just currently not operating. Oh, so it says it's in good. It's working right now. Well, it's no. It it, it has. Well, that hasn't. Should be that has. Should be hasn't. It should be a hand apostrophe T. The boiler, or sorry, yeah, the truck boiler has been down for some time. So it's just uh, cold water you're forcing now. That's right. So do we have any, uh, we're not doing any, uh, any sewer flushing or anything right now, eh? It's scheduled for oh, the it? end of November. But, like, we didn't have hot water for it. It's not really that. It's the, uh, it's, like, right now, from now till January 1, where we would lose is on our digging in the frost. Like everywhere we dig down a curb stop or on a water break or something like that, the sewer flushing does not need hot water. It just needs to flush. Really? Even to get like all the grease or anything? It like definitely that? helps. Yeah. But we've been doing it for how long? For, it doesn't speed the process up any. It would make the pipes cleaner and do a better job. But uh, it wouldn't speed anything up. So we have the resolution moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, resolved superintendent works purchase a new boiler from Joe Johnson Equipment in the amount of sixty-four hundred and eight dollars and ninety-three cents. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. What was that? No, I was in favor. I was gonna put five and a half. <laughs> no, no. Okay, item 6-2, the Aquatic Center Billing uh, Envelope Assessment uh, was talked about recently, and we have the letter and the quote. We have the motion moved by Councilor Delore, a second by Councilor Morio, is all the Town Hire Building Envelope Limited to conduct the Building Envelope Assessment of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center for $4,250. Discussion? Where was this going to come from again? Did we have any left in the... Uh the rec facilities reserve fund? There should be a small amount. All in favor? Carried. Okay, Superintendent Works Report. You have the Works Report. Any questions to Derek? Councilor Morio. Uh, on the third or fourth, there's a curb stop or a water valve that's leaking, do you guys know about that? Um, Third. By Cotton's house on 4th Street South, where the gravel, just where the pavement ends and then the gravel, it's right beside Reach's property. Um, uh, like would that be on 8th Avenue South at the very end? I think they're, they're exactly. Is it in the middle of the road? No, it's yeah, right on the corner. It's, it's I can show it to you like later on a map, which one I'm talking about, but there's water coming from. Uh, I'm guessing we know about it, but... Because <coughs> it's been like that. Back behind my house. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's the one on the 11th, but it could be just it could be just a valve that was that was caught uh, it's, on flushing that I don't I particularly don't haven't seen yet. But it, it was leaking list. water for the last, I'd say, two months. When they turn the valves flushing, yeah, then we would have it on the list okay. for sure. But I will definitely look okay. into that to make sure it's on the list. Okay. Because it cannot through this. Councillor White. 
to more no, a accomplishment uh, under pretty adverse conditions with snow and rain and craziness with Sterling and company. Uh, I think you got the majority of those asphalt homes built. We did. Hopefully they'll stay built for a while. And you also did some uh, cement work with some of our constituents. And I want to thank you for I'll go. Councilor Friesen. Could anyone look at the intersection of 3rd Street North and 13th? Oh, yes. Yeah, we've been getting really complaints bad. on uh, bumpy heads. Okay. Yeah, I can get the greeter down. That'd be good. Cool. I'm going to lose my car if I go into the yeah. Unfortunately, that'll be bumpy every time there's moisture in the road until it's asphalted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that'll have that's part of the sewer line that'll have to settle for a while before. That's right. Okay, any other questions, Garrett? We have the motion moved by Councilor Delorey, and second by Councilor Mori. Resolve the Superintendent Works Report. We receive discussion. All favor? Sorry. Council has online their uh, resource recovery echo center reports. Any questions to Derek or Julie on those reports? They're pretty positive. <coughs> If not, we have the motion moved by Councilor Deloria, second by Councilor Morio, resolve that the MARRC Echo Center visit report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, Council has a copy of the Fire Department report. Any questions on that? Do we know um, how? With the busy uh, couple days there, uh, that's affecting the fire department budget. Yeah, the call hours are way over what he had predicted for this year. I would imagine with that just that twenty-four hour period. Yeah. The motion moved by Councilor Delorey, second by Councilor Morio, resolve the October two thousand seventeen fire department report. You received discussion. All in favor? Okay. Council also has the service tracker reports. Any questions on that? The motion moved by Councilor Delorey, second by Councilor Mora, resolve the service tracker report for March to October 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. I thought, I thought it was for one month and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it just can't be true. You also have the radar sign report. Any comments on the radar sign? Councilor Morin. Does Ken have it, or Jared, do you know if we're getting the, the parts in anytime soon for that? Uh, Is it junk? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I didn't check with Ken before tonight's meeting to see where those were, but I know he's ordered them. I don't know where that is, though, to be honest. So, and that's this is a was that a complete replacement sign from the first one or no the first one is in our office still so so, so that's a complete secondary like that's the complete secondary second that we lines. paid for yeah so that's two out of two now that are malfunctioning yeah those lights will we we force them to give us warranty mm -hmm. so they'll be free but, they just need to get here and we'll take it down but, and replace them uh, for the second sign. Again, we're, we've contacted Traffic Lo Traffic Logics, the manufacturer of the sign, and they are going to be having a booth at AML. I was just going to say that. <laughs> this is a year ago this time we talked to these same guys. Yeah. So, so I'm that's not confident they, in their product is what I'm saying. Yeah, and they can be told that because we, like, we've, mm -hmm. we've told them the truth. It's just a lemon. And they're adamant that, that we're the only ones. So... I don't know if they're feeding it to us or we should give them back and buy guardians or... Is it through Traffic Master, you said? Air it's through Traffic Air. Logics. Traffic Logics. Logics? Yeah, Air Master is the dis distributor. <clears throat> Maybe we can talk See to them at the convention end. again. Yeah. I got no issue letting them know what it is. It is a piece. <clears throat> so we have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, who's all the radar. A uh, speed sign report for October 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore. Was all the handy van report for October 2017 be received? Any questions to Julie? 
All in favor? Carried. All right, we have the work crew uh, supervisor report. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobs and second by Councillor Delore. Resolve that the work crew supervisor report for October 2017 BBC discussion. All in favor? Carried. You also have the building inspector report, should have been in your mailboxes. Okay. Yeah. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, resolve the building inspector report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Also have the um, management minute meeting minutes of October 19th, 26th, and November 2nd. Any questions to Julie on those? Councillor Lorraine. Um, how, what kind of response have you guys been hearing here in the office about the advertisements for our public hearings next week or next meeting? I received one phone call today. Okay. Just with some questions. Just with questions, okay. And, and that's, that's all I've heard, yeah. None of the girls have said anything? No. You, have you guys heard anything? No. Okay. Not a boom. Okay, council members and CAO reports. Councillor White. Abbreviated uh, PMH, uh, board meeting. The big goals right now is X-ray techs. Uh, I hand out a package. I put it into each of your uh, thanks to Julie and team. What's happening in the Prairie Mountain North, where we are, and the town of Swan River specifically. It certainly has some scary information, and hopefully we can turn that around. Uh, on a local issue, Swan Valley Outdoors uh, appear to have grossed fifty-three thousand dollars to go towards our our community as a whole, which is uh, remarkable. And that all stays here. Uh, SAC meeting. Uh, Louisiana Pacific, they're getting, they're now cutting into Saskatchewan just across from, just by Madge Lake, where Madge Lake development is, and they're getting lots of compliments uh, relative to their processes. The Labor Board meeting on the 24th, that went well. The Pacific uh, TLE meeting, that went really well, it was so long. Uh, the Ag Society, uh, it was nice to see the whole community involved in that Ag Society meeting. Not sure where that will go. Uh, I went to the Albert Chartrand Friendship Center AGM for housing. They have 85 units, housing units, that they manage. So they're probably one of our biggest uh, renters. And they have some big goals of taking over all of H Manitoba housing units, all of them in Swan River. They want to take the whole package and manage it all. They're working on that. And the pool meeting last night with uh, Patty and Julie and team, and that went well. Councillor Friesen. <laughs> Um, a library meeting a week ago, a uh, settlement services mm. meeting last night. Um, invite everybody to come to the curling next week. Uh, I had a call from Hugh Skinner from Communities in Bloom asking if the town would like to participate in the national competition as opposed to just the provincial. I said I didn't know. We're having a meeting next week of the ladies that are on that board or on that committee, and I don't really think so. I think it's too much. They have to come and, well, they have to come and judge, and they're a whole lot stricter than the ones we've already had. And then if we win something, we have to go to Nova Scotia, who's going to pay for that? <laughs> Anyway, um, that's everything. Councilor Jacobson. <laughs> Nothing for me, thank you. Councilor Delorme. Um, nothing for me that uh, Asman spoke of. Councilor Moray. Ditto. Uh, four meetings I've been to have been discussed already. Okay, the only thing that hasn't been discussed that tomorrow at 2 o'clock, the, the Legion um, 
and the schools are, it's, yeah, it's called no stone, I can't remember the exact term, but what they're doing, they have school kids have researched uh, people in the veteran section of the cemetery, and they're going to say a little bit about them, I think, and then put a poppy on the graves of the veterans. And, and a flag. And a flag. Each class has been assigned a block. I don't mean to take over here. Okay. But I talked to Cliff yesterday, okay. and each class has been given a block in the cemetery, and they will go to that block, and they each have their own site to go to, and they will put a flag and a poppy. There's a bagpiper going to be out there, the RCMP are going to be out there. Um, and the kids have each been given a biography of the person they're going to go to. And I just think it's a great, great Absolutely. thing for the kids. Just a great, now, great did, thing. Did Jordan Kornbeck talk to you? He phoned about getting to be able to plug his snowblower in at the building there to fire it up to clean the rows and things. Yeah, I gave him my cells. Whatever he needs, he just okay. needs to call me. I'll help him. Okay. He probably should have done it today if he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Julie, do you have anything? Um, just working on budgets and planning the Christmas party. Um, I did the Canada Day application, so we'll go over that for you today. Cool. For 2018 Canada Day. And um, many other things. Did you get some entertainment for the Christmas party? Um, yes, I did speak with uh, Kenny Thompson, and he is available that night. If if we're interested in that. Um, yeah, but we can talk. We can talk about that after. Okay, we'll continue on then with bylaws. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, who saw that bylaw 22 2017, being in the bylaw of Town of Salm River, to establish an equitable method for calculating frontage of corner and irregular shaped lots be read a second time. Discussion? In favor? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, resolve uh, bylaw 22-2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish an equitable method of calculating frontage on corner and irregular shape lots be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Everybody else? Yeah. So. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and resolve the Council's Hall be hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check 21447 to 21566 for a total of 307,042.36, and payroll account from check 4087 to 4094 for a total of 102,478. Questions to Julie on any of the checks? Councillor Gloria. Um, 21447 is the visa. And I know it's probably for a whole bunch of things, but what, what kind of control do we have on visas? Like, what, how do you decide what goes on a visa and what gets a PO? Uh, basically, like the department heads are given visas, and we use it for gas, registration okay. fees. And, uh, and most items, even if they're put on the visa, require a PO. Okay. Yeah. Right. So a okay. PO is handed in so that it can be accounted in okay. the account system. That's correct. So I guess my, my WCW registration fee went on. I also wrote a PO to Kelly. But in the case where I didn't have a gas card, I used my visa. Okay, and then 21449, again for the visa for the exact same amount. Is there, did we pay a bill twice? Uh, one is a voided check. You see the little star beside Oh, yeah, I can barely see that. Yeah. Okay, sorry. All in favor of the resolution? 
carried. A motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Fries, and resolve the 2017-2018 Council Standing Committees and other appointments be hereby approved. Anybody want any changes? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve the financial statements for the month ended September 30th, 2017, when the adopted as received. Questions? All in favor? I think that was fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's only been for four years. Right on schedule. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve that. 537 Spec Road be turned sold to Sir J. Kateja for $8,000 plus GST. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Jacobson, whereas Wisconsin Cree Nation is under the terms of the framework agreement of treaty land entitlement as acquired lot one plan 54719 DLTO located in the town of Swan River, and whereas the nation and the town, pursuant to the section of the Municipal Act and the Framework Agreement, have drafted a municipal development service agreement. Therefore, be it resolved as mayor and the chief administrative officer be authorized to sign this agreement <coughs> on behalf of the town of Swan River. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Jacobson. Resolve the following building permit applications be received. Uh, B. Gende, fence $2,000. Jeremy Kushnerick, fence $2,500. Sandra Kirby, renovations $40,000. Red Barn, demo zero. Reed Mini Storage Facility $5,000. Darren K. House and Garage $170,000. Red Barn, rebuild addition $15,400. Terry Ganita, demo, no charge. Sheldon Stralia, Foundation on RTM, $200,000. Calvin Bordy, in addition, $35,000. Mohammed Al Sheikh Ali, uh, 603 Main Street, Signs, $1,565. David Kalinge, Renovations, $23,000. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor. White resolved that the proceeds from the sale of the SCBAs and tanks in the amount of $6,525 be transferred from the General Operating Fund to the Firefighting Equipment Reserve Fund. Discussion? Yeah. Um, we're, we're paying, uh, what is it, 50000 a year for the next number of years for the SCBAs out of the general fund, like out of general taxes. So I would... Before we put anything back into this, I'd like to see that existing that existing debt paid down before we go and just keep money in a reserve just you to sit there. The capital. Yeah, I agree. Pay on the capital, or we've got lot, we got lots that we can put or this principal. We we can put this this money on any of our many much much debt. Bad English, but so I and really in the grand scheme of things, sixty five hundred dollars in the fire. We all know how much firefighting equipment costs. That doesn't buy us nothing. So do we want to defeat the resolution? Well, I won't be voting for it, but you guys can vote however you choose. Correct. Any other discussion? I'd rather see it go on the principle of the capital purchase versus sit somewhere. Okay, all in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Jacobson, whereas the boiler unit for the Congo sewer jet vac truck will need to be replaced at a cost of 640893, and whereas Section 169.5 and 169.7 of the Municipal Act allow for Council to authorize an expenditure without a public hearing for an amount not provided for an, in an operating budget or capital budget and may fund the expenditure by transfer from machine, municipalities reserve funds, therefore be it resolved that 640893. 
$408,408.93 be transferred from the machinery replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Discussion? Yeah. Um, so you probably don't have it, but we'll need a resolution like that, like this one, to, take, to pay for the building envelope inspectors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll so do you'll do one for the next meeting? Okay. Don't forget. I wrote it down. Okay, good. Okay. All in favor? Carry on. A uh, motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolve the notification of resignation received from Monica Zitting be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. A motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolve that. 1201 Third Street South be sold to Henry Horkoff for $2,000 plus GST. How big a lot is that? It's just a regular size lot and the assessed value is $6,400. Is it a one that we require to build no, on in two it, years? It's not one of the ones that we had set aside for that, but mm -hmm. there's no reason why you couldn't, you know, put that same caveat on. We do have you know, a template for that type of agreement. So does that need to be in the resolution? Have, have, I mean, we're kind of changing the terms of if he's already agreed to purchase that, we haven't mentioned that caveat. He, um, he's stated that he's going to build. Sort of. Sort of, yeah, right away. But so can I can certainly um, advise him of it. Like, you know, we haven't signed a sale agreement or anything, so. Councillor Moore, can we attach it? Like part of the resolution with the same terms and condition as the municipal developers, you got two years to put a structure on that to lock up stage. Yeah, yeah, that's If you're going for the same two thousand dollar scenario as the municipal developers, uh, you're going to get the same mirrored image of the conditions. So, mm -hmm. so we need to amend this resolution then. Yeah. His statement is uh, to buy, blah blah, with the intent to build in the fall. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I would certainly um, talk to him about it before I got him to sign any sale. So I'm agreement. not sure how we proceed on this. Uh, we can amend that resolution. Okay, okay. so motion to amend the resolution. Well, we, I'll the, just check. The, uh, well, with the we seconder can okay, uh, make the So I'll just add it. Further be it resolved that um, the municipal developers' conditions. That, that this purchase is subject to um, a caveat um, stating that um, a house uh, uh, dwelling will be built on the property to lock up stage within two years. Lock up stage within two years. Slow down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not into shorthand. So the motion moved by Councillor Fears and second by Councillor Jacobson. That further be it resolved that this purchase is subject to uh, a caveat stating that a dwelling must be built to the lock up stage within two years. From the date of purchase. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Councillor Jacobson, please note the initial the uh, amendment. Okay. Seconded by Councillor um, Morio, resolve that pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? 